My name is Crypto Dog to the rescue. Welcome to my channel. Appreciate everybody watching. Uh, please like, subscribe, hit the bell, comment below, uh, leave your Ethereum Bitcoin address. I'm still doing the uh, 100 subscriber giveaway for a Bitcoin or Ethereum cold storage coin. If you can see that, I'll kind of keep it uh, as steady as possible. Um, they're cool coins. Uh, these are copper ones and they have silver ones and gold ones coming out. And I'm going to be getting a couple silver ones. Uh, here shortly. So cool things to see. Uh, let's get right into it here. I uh, apologize. I didn't make a video yesterday. Um, I, I, you know, like I said, I'm in cryptocurrency. I'm all in with cryptocurrency. I mean, I still do work um, on a part time basis as a manager. But um, uh, when it comes to cryptocurrency, I'm really, really uh, diving in deep here for the past seven, eight months. So I'm a miner. So I always have to be, you know, doing mining things. Um, you know, I own a business in cryptocurrency and consulting and investing and mining. So, um, you know, I always have to keep up with my books for the business. I always have to keep up with new trends and whether what new things are coming out the IRS. I mean, you know, mining's its own thing. Then you have my investments and I have my, my bot trading uh, going on. And of course, you know, because due to this um, market, you know, going down more than it is going up at the moment, you know, it took a nice little spike up uh, past couple days and then now it's just on a gradual downturn. Um, and uh, I'll get into that after a second here. But yeah, I've been really busy. So I, I apologize if I haven't made a video uh, yesterday, which I, I feel like I should have because I did a lot of um, research, but I just didn't do a video. So I had to re-research this morning uh, so I can pop a video out um, and then keep going, you know, I'm going to be getting onto steam it and then all these other, I mean, I'm completely in cryptocurrency to win it. So, um, uh, you know, let's get right into it. 280 billion right now. So it kind of went down, still kind of gradually going down on a daily basis. Uh, the, the real thing that I wanted to touch on, just looking at, uh, the coin market cap here, the seven day graph, you can see that Bitcoin has gone sideways the whole time that everybody is going down which means it's getting away from the pack and i've mentioned this in other videos that they, it, it looked like it was starting to get away from the pack just basically based on um say you know ethereum's number two um the last time it was up in 7400 ethereum was at like 550 you know and now we're at 7400 7600 7700 and we're at 450, 470. And it doesn't make, as far as I'm saying, is it's getting away from the pack. And of course, Bitcoin dominance is at 45.4. 45.4, guys, which means to me, uh, and I'm a project manager as well, you know, as far as educated and um, uh, with, with the bachelor's degree. But, you know, with the Bitcoin, Bitcoin is, be is going to become rich man's coin. It's as simple as that. It's at $7,400. It's going to become the rich man's coin. There's only 21 million of them out there in the world. So that's why it's getting away from the pack. Big investors, you know, big money's coming in and they're putting their money into something that's stable, a stable coin, Bitcoin. And as much as it goes up and down and so on and so forth, it ain't going anywhere. You know, everybody calls stable coins like, you know, USD Tether and, and True USD and then this new one called Stable Coin, I guess, or. I can't even remember what it's called, but um, it, it, the point is they're not stable. Those are flatline coins. That's my definition of stable versus flatline coins. But getting off on a tangent here, you know, it looks like Bitcoin is getting away from the pack. So if you are bot trading, if you are trading and so on and so forth, I would suggest using your base currency coin, Bitcoin right now, because it's just going to keep going up. You know? So you want to make take your profits in Bitcoin and not anything else. Um, so, you know, I've had it yesterday. I was doing a lot of moving around um, in my mining and my trading and my bot trading and so on and so forth. So um, so let's move into it a little bit more. Change 24 hour changers. Not many today, but we did add a couple good ones. Decentraland can is up down 10, 11 percent. Zencash up almost 10 percent. Dash almost up 5 percent. Mithril up two and a half percent. So that's good to see. You know, Factum. These are all good coins to see on a down market going up it seems like for the most part you know uh, it so it, it's there's good things to see even on in a down market um moving in let's move into to bitcoin here you know last videos i was talking about um the the ichimoku cloud you know and this is on a day chart and it's it's really weathering through that cloud it's going through it it's kicking butt through that cloud and all it has to do now at this point is to stay in this cloud and it will actually we will quote unquote be on an uptrend 
uh, considered an uptrend after that cloud. I don't know if you can even see with my big head in the way, but um, this is what we're looking at. So it looks good to see. Now, you know, keep an eye. Now look at that up, you know, this, this uptrend right here um, on what, July 16th, right? So we'll move into Ethereum since it's number two on the, uh, you know, coin leaders. And now you can see that on it, it took a little spike and now it's going back down. So it, it's it, it's basically just telling me that Bitcoin is getting away. Oop, my big head's probably in the way of that. But yeah, so it went up right here on the 16th, uh, you know, kind of following Bitcoin. And then now everything is kind of going on a downtrend and Bitcoin is staying up there. Now, obviously, it's red, too, because everything else is red. But now it's trailing the downward trend when usually it's the start of the upward trend, the downward trend. So. You know, Bitcoin sustaining, big money's coming into play, um, and we shall see what happens. And as you can see, on the on, I put a, a, a Fibonacci retracement in here, and it's at that 3.82. This is based on an upward trend uh, Fibonacci from the last obvious high to the last obvious low we had, and it's at that 3.82, and it's just riding on that 3.82. So is it going to break it and start going back down or is it going to just kind of go sideways and write it and then eventually hopefully go up so um it look the future is looking bright you know it's just slowly coming we all want it to come now but it, it's coming you know there's a lot of things in the play the etfs which obviously are going to be coming down the line but um uh you know this year is, is looking pretty good we all think there's going to be this big, you know, spike, you know, big bullish run that we always have on a yearly basis because we think it's cyclical. You know, that might be our downfall, just thinking that it's cyclical. You know, when we have ETFs coming in, futures is now involved. We're getting e Ethereum futures. We're getting all kinds of coins now that want to open up futures. And again, when ETFs open up the door, it's going to be floodgates opening up. So. So as you can see with Ethereum, it's not it doesn't want to get into that cloud. You know, it try it wanted to, and then no, it said no, 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 no. I'm not going to be like Bitcoin. And Ethereum's having its own problems as well um, moving forward. You know, their whole thing is scalability. And you know, I follow um, Vitalik Buterin, not giving away Ethereum Buterin. That's what I like his uh, Twitter name. And uh, it's this this person, Aparna Krishnan, she um, she posted this: Plasma and sharding are the same problem for opposite perspective. Sharding takes users and tries to merge them up to the blockchain while plasma takes a blockchain and splits it down to a sub chains of users cross-chain communication adds multiple blockchains so sharding plasma cross-chain communication okay that's kind of you know in a nutshell here so vitalik actually came back and says my view there are basically five scaling strategies many separate chains super big blocks incremental improvements that don't change security model uh, example, replacing the TXS and SIGs with compressed Delta plus Starks, uh, layer two channels and plasma, and of course, number five, sharding. So, you know, they all went back and forth in this whole thing. I read it almost all of this. And, uh, you know, Jamie Pitts comes in and, and he kind of just reiterates it down and says he, he's going to he basically distills it down to pure strategies. Number one is bifur bi bifurcation, separate chains. Um, vertical partitioning, which is big blocks, SMR. Optimization without changing security model, which is optimizing. Uh, four, horizon, uh, horizontal partitioning, algorithmic sharding, and horizontal partitioning, dynamic sharding. So there's, um, there's ways that, you know, he basically just broke it down into the technical terms of what uh, she was talking about, Aparna Krishna, when she first started this. Um, now, uh, Vitalik comes back and says one and two are obviously useful to some extent, but ultimately, ultimately insufficient and kind of lame for scaling. That is obviously we need more separate chains for experimentation and ecosystem diversity. Three is argu arguably underrated. Four and five get the biggest gains. So sharding gives the biggest gains. Um, let's see my, my mouse will work here. So sharding four and five give you the biggest gains. Three of these says is underrated with this optimization without changing the security model. Basically, if you think about EOS and NEO, I won't say even NEO, I'd say EOS at this point, is that they are just reacting to problems. So when something happens, it's based on you know a problem with their um, uh, infrastructure or anything in, in, involved, 
then they fix the problem. So, you know, is it unarguably underrated? Eh, I guess so, but it's an, it, uh, to me, they're not doing anything proactive. It's just overreact, I mean, over, it's reaction. So, uh, to what happened. So, um, and of course he says, you know, I said, ultimately lame Bitcoin's one megabyte size is way smaller than optimal. I'm still waiting, seeing what BCH does in the longer term. If it just keeps going up and no gains to fraud proofs, data availability proofs or other light client tech, then I'll find it uninteresting. So if they just keep going back and forth and kind of, you know, what it is, bifurcation, you know, what is a vertical partitioning, software optimization, network topology optimization, which is the number one. He added in another one, network topology optimization for Jamie Pitts. And, uh, you know, they all kind of just get into it. And really what I took out of it, if you guys don't want to read all this and kind of go through it all, but what I took out of it is, is that, um, yeah, this is actually the last one. Jessic, Jessic Alexander. So he's basically replies and says, well, number one, we have this now and it's not scaling. Number two, we have this now. It's not scaling. Uh, number three, he just doesn't know, which basically, you know, it's reacting. It's not a proacting thing. Uh, tested, it's working. Number four, which is the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, not dynamic sharding, but the other one. Um, and, uh, Number five, he's waiting for uh, Vitalik Buterin to do the, the dynamic sharding on there. Horizontal partitioning, algorithmic sharding. So that's in testing right now. So uh, these two are going to be the biggest, the, the best way of scaling um, in a long term. So that's why Vitalik has picked those basically when it comes down to it. And through all this, it's kind of what everybody's kind of saying. So uh, at least they're arguing it. And then even other people, which was something that I really, really did want to uh, touch on as well, was everybody was saying, oh, why don't you just add hardware? Why do you keep messing with the software of everything when you can just add hardware like HPB, high performance blockchain is? I mean, they kept saying it over and over and over by through other people, like this MP guy. Um, hardware solution of HPB Global can possibly be used as a plug, plug-in for EVM in the future. This hardware will be open source. So that's what, you know, China, if once HPB takes off, and everybody realizes that hardware can be the key to this, it's open source. They're gonna start selling it off, you know, and these, uh, uh, um, what do you call them? these chips, these, these that are a uh, high performance blockchain ads. Uh, it's, it's gonna be great. And then I have, you know, EOS way is, is a bad way. It's, you know, I, it's so, and I, again, I hate, I always say EOS is the duck, so I always wanna press on the EOS duck always, every time I see it. And every time I see somebody in a different chat, talking about EOS and the way scaling works, they're trying to hit the home run, you know, because they're doing it with only 21 BPs. So um, it, their way of doing it is, um, it's not scaling at, at the moment, the way they're do, that they're doing things. Uh, big blocks is what they're doing, big blocks, you know. So EOS is doing 100 nodes, I believe, but they're big blocks, you know what I mean, to do it, so. Um, so that's Ethereum for you. You know, they he's this is the reason why I, I, I still believe in Ethereum. It's you know, obviously the godfather of smart contract coins. So they just need to figure out their sharding and they're going into POS to do that. And you know, this is the reason why he's doing um, horizontal sharding with algorithmic or dynamic uh, partitioning sharding. I mean, so uh, yeah, so uh, moving in, so the ETFs moving forward with the ETFs here. They are certain to win approval later this year. Everybody always says later. And I've been, you know, reading things on, on Reddit and Steemit and all these other sources. Um, and I watch a lot of people, you know, and even Mr. Kristoff was uh, talking about it on his videos. Um, uh, YouTuber, you know, I, I like watching Mr. Kristoff because he is a miner. He's an investor. He knows what he's talking about because he does it. And that's why I do these things, too. I'm in it to win it. Um, but when I listen to people who don't understand mining and don't understand the way things work, and they're yet they're they're reading it off of you know some page just like the rest of us are, um, without doing extra work because they don't really understand mining. If you don't do mining, it's really hard to, to understand it if you're not getting to, to get every facet. Is my point. You can overall get what mining is, but there's many many facets to it because uh, people say, well, why don't you just mine Bitcoin? Why don't you just mine Ethereum? Why don't you mine the most the less difficult coin with the highest um, uh, coin price and so on and so forth? It's difficult. Um, so that's uh, and, and limited to the GPU. So there's just a lot of things in mining. 
Um, so when I listen to people that don't know anything about mining, if they're talking about it and they're saying how it's um, affecting Bitcoin price and all that stuff, so I just kind of look at it and go, you know, I don't really understand what you're saying. You're just you're reading and you're going off of what that person has, has wrote uh, without even looking at, you know, who wrote it and and their um, referencing, you know, references, basically. So moving forward in the ETFs here. So everybody's talking about ETFs. I put a couple things out on Reddit about the ETFs and what everybody thinks about maybe when they're coming out. Um, after approval. So, you know, again, Mr. Kristoff, he's touched on this and he said, you know, August 10th is not going to be the date that approval is going to be met. That's just the date that they set. You know, just like anything, everything is going to be late because there's always going to be, um, you know, dotting the I's and crossing the T's. And that usually takes, um, you know, a month or two for them to do that. So I would say in September, everything, you know, at least one ETF will be approved. And again, you're opening up the door. And, and this kind of says that too, as well. You're opening up the door for more people to want to do ETFs because they're going to go, how'd you do it? Well, I want to do it too. And then, of course, um, uh, the floodgates are open at that point. So one thing I did want to touch on just on this um, uh, article here, uh, the CFTC, coming from the CFTC, said the following. I would call it 90% at this point. The crypto markets have moderated and regulars have watched the lack of drama surrounding Bitcoin futures across several global exchanges. The price moderation and adoption of a peer product is what the conversations have centered around. In January, we were justifiably concerned about the bubble and the harm a quickly approved product could attract speculators and create losses that led to a significant lawsuits. Now those factors seem to be mitigated significantly. So it's just taking time. It's all SEC you know, regulation and ETFs and getting the big money in and so on and so forth. It's a domino effect. We need the investors to, to feel safe so the ETFs can open, so then they can, you know, ETFs can then take off and it becomes a profitable thing for everyone and not straight out the gate, a loss thing. It, you know, it, that's basically what everybody's looking at. So um, that's just basically what I wanted to touch on this is that you're 90% sure that it's going to be um, approved. An ETF will be approved, but it's just saying that probably in September, I would say late September, to October that it'll be finalized, the ETF will be approved, and then it'll roll out probably six months to a year after that. So that's my take on it. Take it with a grain of salt. I'm not a financial advisor. Please do your own um, research, um, you know, and, and make your own decisions when you're doing your investing. It's your guys' money, but I, I like to put these out there. I enjoy doing these videos, and I hope everybody do um, take something away from the positive out of here. Um, and even the negative stuff, at least keep it in the back of your mind when you guys are trading and doing things. You know, I always cross reference things just to make sure that I'm looking at things right. You know, uh, that's number one thing that my mentor has actually told me back in the day was you always want to make sure that you're getting the right information from the right people. You know, I mean, Smarterium, you know, these are just websites that are doing um, um you know, articles, journalism, you know, so how much can you really, you know, uh, say that I, I, uh, I agree with this journalism. So moving forward, JP pay, JP Morgan makes plans to issue IPO tokens with a blockchain technology. So JP Morgan, one of the ones, big ones, you know, Jamie Demon, JP Morgan, always talking shit about cryptocurrency and all this stuff. You know, he was in with the big boys with, uh, Jamie, you know, uh, Buffett, Warren Buffett, Jamie Demon, um, and uh, it's all these big guys are, are talking shit about it all year. And all of a sudden you see, oh, JP Morgan is now getting into cryptocurrency. And what they're doing, this is the facet that I'm seeing is starting to emerge here um, to leverage. The big boys have all been looking this year to leverage cryptocurrency. And they haven't figured it out. Now they figured it out. It's patents. That's how they're doing it. They're going to leverage this through patents. That's how they're centralizing it. They're saying, I own the patent and had to do this, and you can't do this without my approval. So this patent um, is, uh, okay, so JP Morgan has informed the public about its plans to apply for a patent for the creation of a distributed system that issues vital depository receipts using blockchain technology. So the receipts are more or less likely initial coin offering tokens. JP Morgan filed a patent application in January. So on Thursday, it was published by the United States Patent and, Tra and uh, Trademark Office. The patent gives a summary of how users who are on the distributed network will be able to tokenize their assets as well as trade the virtual depository receipts. So there we go. You know, they're turning 
things that you're attaining, you know, that you're able to hold in your hand into cryptocurrency as a receipt. So it's just basically a copy of it, a receipt on the, on the blockchain. So there's, so it never goes away. That receipt never goes away. So you, but you still have a copy of it. So if you ever lose it, they can always go back on the blockchain um, and look it up. You know what I mean? So smart thing to do. You know what I mean? Very, very smart patent. They did this back in January and I didn't even know JP Morgan was, you know, looking for, Obviously, we all knew that they were looking for things, but I didn't know that they threw up a patent, you know, uh, application in back then. So, you know, you have MasterCard coming in with their own patent um, to uh, what was it? And then IBM was doing is going to be doing their own patent for. Um, oh, my gosh, I can't even remember now, but they're, they're bringing out patents, too, for, um, I, I believe. Fund trading, electronic fund trading of some sort. And then there's another one. Jeez, I can't even remember. It's been a couple of days and I'm all over in cryptocurrency. But they're having patents coming out too is my point. Patents are the big thing with the big money guys now. They're going to they're gonna corner it by patenting it and saying, you have to pay me now for my patent. So, you know, genius, genius, genius way of doing it as far as making it mainstream and uh, softer to make everybody kind of flow into there. Um, using blockchain and cryptocurrency. So last but not least, I do want to look into crypto fear and greed index 47 today. Wow. I mean, no matter if the if everything else is going down, as long as Bitcoin keeps its baseline and it does not go down, seems to me like the uh, sentiment and uh, uh, greed just stays. So Bitcoin, as we know, big money, big coins for investors. It's going to be the rich man's uh, coin, I believe, in the future. So get on board now is, is kind of my uh, recommendation. Again, not a financial advisor, um, but, you know, that would be my, you know, um, two cents, you know, two Satoshis about it. Sentiment history. Yeah, I mean, it's it's on a wow. That's a nice uh, uh, it's a nice angle. You know what I mean? It's just over 45 and it's not a 90. So it's at like 55, 60. Great, great angle on a sentiment history. But again, you know, it's just a sentiment history um, on there. It's. So you guys take it with a grain of salt. You know, my name is Crypto Dog to the rescue. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell, comment below. Uh, and you guys have a good day. Keep up the grind.